Hi, this is DSC Oxheimer. This is another edition of Spectre. And this is just, I'm doing a little bit of a, uh, I'm just going to talk about the documentary The 13th, which is currently streaming on Netflix. It's, it's a good documentary. Um, it, uh, I read a book, it was similar to it when I was in college, called The Promised Land. And the reason I watched it, I watched it because uh, an old friend of mine that, um, Actually, last time I really saw her, she was living in Boulder, Colorado, and I was there for a little bit. I was living there briefly, um, not very long. But um, so, uh, if she watches this, she can see how old I've gotten. So, because uh, that was about 2003. So, anyway, so the 13th is it's 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 a movie. It's a documentary about race in America. About um, uh, more specifically, black people, and the it refers to the Thirteenth Amendment, which helped abolish slavery or abolish slavery, and um, and um, so here's like what was the reason? Like I was responding to online, like Facebook and social media, kind of satirically making fun of the term, or you know, scrutinizing it in a satirical way, white privilege. Now, um, and, I, and, and the, kind of the reason why is, is sort of, because I see a lot of people, most of the people I see talking about white privilege seem to be white people. Um, maybe it's just particularly on YouTube, you know, it's college students and sort of, you know, these TED Talks and stuff like that. Um, Peggy McIntosh, who wrote The Invisible Knapsack, if you're familiar with it. Um, of white privilege. It was an invisible knapsack. And I think you get it at like Hogwarts. And, um, it's like the difference between being like a wizard or a muggle, you know, being white or anybody else, I guess. So, um, it is, it's a good thing. It is like, it's like, because simply because I don't agree with the term white privilege doesn't mean that I don't think racism exists or that, um, I don't think, you know, it has nothing to do with that. The reason I don't like the term white privilege, it has something, I mean, I got this, um, this was attached to, you know, when we were talking about it um, online, and um, my old, um, I'll say her name, Tressa. She's a very, very lovely, intelligent person. And I'm not, this is, the, this, the only, I mean, I agree with, with all of that I do, okay? I always have. I've been pro, I'm anti-discrimination across the board. I, I fucking, that, that's kind of why I don't like the term white privilege, because I think it is, it, it is a discriminatory, discriminatory, discriminatory term. It is. You can't get away from that. Um, that's my final verdict on that. That's just my personal view, and I'm not saying I'm probably wrong, maybe I am. But some of the stuff, like, um, you know, how I look at, you know, when I, when I encounter, I mean, I, I live, you know, in an apartment complex in a small college town. So I don't, I don't live like in an inner city. I don't live in a place like Detroit or Camden, New Jersey, where the cops are um, abusive toward, probably more likely to be abusive towards um, maybe black people or more people. And the thing of it is, Another thing that kind of annoys me when people say, like, well, you don't have to worry about getting shot by the police. Um, uh, here's what I ask you. If you're white, um, just go out and about here at night or whatever, wherever you are. I guess maybe you live in a more urban area. I don't know. But go out, like, taunt a cop or whatever. Just look suspicious as a white person. And when they say, hey, hey, what are you doing? Run and see what happens. See what happens to you. Okay. Um, it, it's the, there's um, the term white privilege creates to me a distortion for how people live, and it says that being white and being privileged are mutually exclusive. They're not. And I know um, I was told by. Um, uh, trust when she was when she was texting me about this that you have to get away from the money thing it's not about money no it's not all about money I'm not saying it is all about money money is a big part of it though when we were talking about socioeconomic 
advantages people have. And they even talk about it on this. And this, this, this article is called Explaining White Privilege to a Broke White Person. And guess what the picture under the title of the article is a trailer, which is what typically white poor people live in, which is even, you know. So anyway, it's about this someone, it's written by Gina Crosley um, Cor, Corcoran. Pronounce that correctly. Try pronouncing my fucking last name right. Shit. Anyway, she said that you know she didn't grow up. She was kind of poor when she grew up and stuff. But some feminist told her she had white privilege, and she told her that my white skin didn't do shit to prevent her from experiencing poverty, which is true. But okay, so here's just some tidbits in here to go over it. Okay. If a traffic cop pulls me over, or if the IRS audits my tax return, I can be sure I haven't been singled out by my race. How can you be sure of that? Just because you're, I mean, you wouldn't be singled out because you're race, you're singled out probably because you were speeding, and you, you, you fucked up on your taxes or you didn't pay them. Um, it, it's, it's not, um, I, I don't know, um, <laughs> um, you know, the thing is, the first you have to do something usually before the cops pull you over. Um, I mean, there, there's of course a higher instance of um, police in, in some areas where they do that, but most of the time, um, cops don't sh really shoot people. Even um, thing of it is, and. Um, you know, some of the people that were in the news were sort of doing something wrong, but what the cops did in response to it was wrong, you know, and, you know, and that's a whole complicated, you know, matter to discuss. I'm not a fucking lawyer or anything like that. Um, but some of the stuff, it just gets, into the, it gets a little bit like almost paranoid. I can, ar I can wish to arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. What does that mean? You think if you're if you're black, you don't have a lot of other black friends you can hang out with? I don't even care. I don't even. What does that mean? Are you just friends with people because they're of your own race, or what? What is that? I don't get that. If you okay, here's another part of this article. If you read the rest of my list of the list, you can see how white people and people of color experience the world in two very different ways. But listen, this is not to be said that to make white people feel guilty about their privilege. Well, gee willikers. I hope not. It's not your fault you were born with white skin, exactly, and experience these privileges. You know, just because you were born white, I mean, the thing of it is, if you're poor, you experience class bigotry. I have experienced it. I knew a lot of poor people that I grew up with experienced it, who didn't have fucking heat in their homes sometimes during the winter. Um, um, they experienced it when they went to school from the rich kids and the school itself. So I kind of resent the fact that they assume that just because people are white, they never experience bigotry and they don't know how that feels. Um, and then it even says right here, I do understand Macintosh's essay may rub people the wrong way. There are several points that I list that I felt spoke more to the author's status as a middle-class person than a white person. For example, if I should need to move, I can be pretty sure of renting or purchasing housing in the area which I can afford and where I which, in which I want to live. Um, I can't afford to live where I'm living right now. The only reason I live here is because I moved here with my fiance who can afford to live here. And part of that, and, and that's how that happens sometimes. It's just, I mean, if I didn't have, I mean, I guess I'm privileged because I have a significant other that um, is willing to let me live with her, even though I can't afford the accommodations that we have. But we've been together for 10 years. And anywho, <laughs> there's all kinds of living situations. I just, I don't, I, and here's another one. I can be pretty sure the neighbors in the location will be natural, will be neutral or pleasant to me. Um, what the fuck does that mean? I can't be sure of anything of where you live. People are f all kinds of fucked up everywhere. 
you could have a completely psycho neighbor, you could have a completely, you know, that's, that's not even, I don't even know what the fuck that means. I mean, I, I live in a, I live in a multiracial living complex where I'm at now. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's where I currently am. I know it's that's just anecdotal, that's just my experience, but anyway. And keep in mind, this, this, the, 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 um, and I've talked about, I did a whole video on white privilege before, because I don't even know why I'm going through all this again, but this is just to give more of, you know, some, some tidbits from that actual essay in this article, which incorporates stuff from Peggy McIntosh's essay. And there are many more points in this essay where the word race should be substituted for the word class, which would be ultimately paint a very different picture, which that is why I had such a hard time identifying with this essay for so long. This is when I first wrote about white privilege years ago, I demanded to know why this white woman felt that my experience were the same as hers when no, my family most certainly could not rent housing in the year which for okay. Well see a lot of the I mean the thing in Peggy McIntosh's original essay is presumptuous. It encourages people to presume you know, what white people's lives are like simply based on the fact they're white, which is called a distortion, which creates a distortion of how a lot of people live because a lot of people don't live that way. And I'm not saying they experience racism, you know, be, you know, they don't, they're not black, so they're not, they're not going to necessarily be discriminated against. I mean, if you're talking about, they're, okay, they don't, they don't get yelled at by some, you know, um, redneck, pointy, hood-wearing Klansman, um, yeah, that's one thing. Um, but they experience it in a lot of other ways. They experience it socially. They experience it in in the community they live in, where they are on the bottom rung of the ladder. They experience, you know. So it's not that poor white people living in abject poverty have privilege. They don't, and they are probably going to remain poor. Most people who remain poor remain poor. It doesn't really fucking matter. Um, usually. So, yeah, and it goes on and talks about citizenship. Yeah, simply being born in this country affords you certain privileges. Non-citizens will never access. That's true. Um, being born into a financially stable family will help... Yeah, I think I read that before. I don't know if I did read that before. Uh, a financially stable family will help guarantee your health, happiness, education, intelligence, and future opportunities. And not every white person is born into a financially stable institution. And a lot of black people aren't either. And I, and I put them in the same category, more or less. Um, it's, you know, and yeah, of course, you know, there's another about sexual orientation. There's a bullet point there next to that. By being born straight, yeah, okay. You do have some, you know, it's better, it was better for you if you're straight. Um, but that's just how you're born. Okay, I mean... Without going, oh uh, yeah, being born male. I like this one. Being born male, you can assume that you can walk through a parking garage without, this is my favorite one. You can walk through a parking garage without worrying you're being raped and that a defense attorney will then blame it on what you were wearing. Bravo. The old white male privilege. At least I'm not going to be raped in the parking deck. When I where I work at, I walk. Um, I I go to a parking deck late at night uh, across the street, and I do kind of try to be aware of my surroundings and see who's around me. I'm not. You can get rolled if you're a white male. And mugged. I'm not saying I'm going to be raped. You, know, you could be, I guess. I mean, it can happen. I mean, you see the movie Deliverance? White males can get raped. They get raped in prison all the time and nobody gives fucking shit, you know? I mean, you know, men get raped in prison all the time and nobody, you know... Um, there, there, isn't, there isn't really the... I don't hear the big outcry. I mean, we're talking like low-level offenders who wind up in jail who get raped and stuff. I don't hear a lot of this outcry from social justice warriors about that. 
you know. So, yeah, there's advantages you have. There's all, there's some people do have advantages over other people, you know. I mean, it is a fact of life. It's not, um, but it, it doesn't, um, and I do, like, the movie, The 13th, I would highly recommend watch. It's a great movie. It confirms everything I, you know, a lot of things that I, I knew of about, you know, Ronald Reagan, what a fucker he was. Um, and he should be put in his proper historical context. And I, I hate discrimination. I really do. And that's kind of why I don't like this shit. Because all it is is discrimination. It's the same thing. You're just, you're just basically, you're, um, it's, it's, you're just going back into the burning building with this. There's no, there's no, there's nothing to be, there's nothing good that will come of this when you generalize about someone based on the color of their skin, irregardless, uh, even if you're white. It, it's still not, it is, you're, you're making, you're still making a generalization about somebody based on someone's ethnicity, and it's always racist. So, you know, and this is coming from someone, I mean, I, I don't get, like, offended by what, I just think, I, I find the term, I find the term just basically wrong. I, I find it, it it's, it's, it's an extremist term that um, is sort of designed, it's designed to kind of market talking points, I think, more or less, be, because of... I mean, everything basically right now, people don't like really like look around and go out and look around. Everything is mediated reality. Everything is through this thing because people are walking around all day like zombies with this. And that's all they're getting, you know? The, the people are getting these these just um, memes and all sorts of just, just misfucking information out the ass about everything. And they, they, they make... You know, it's it's just we, we live in the most polarized time of all, or one of the most polarizing times of all. And the last thing you need to do is, is basically start like, hmm, we who can we sort of want to generalize about now? How how we 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 need a boogeyman to blame for everything. And we it can't be a person, it can't be persons, it can't be individuals that we can name, so we'll just you know, let's just go back to the white devil, and and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll go back to that old chestnut. And I think that's kind of what it is. It's what it sort of seems like. Um, you know, I mean, when I was in college, I I uh, I was a journalism major. I I was is you know, I mean, this is 1996 liberal. It's not 2018 liberal. But I don't. Um, use terms like cis normative or whatever. I don't. I. I just don't. I don't try to uh, put unnecessary unnecessary scrutiny on people based on how they were born. And that's what this is doing. Whether you're a black, whether you're Asian or Jewish or Hispanic or you're gay or you're transgender, I don't want to put anything. I don't want to treat you with anything but dignity and respect, like everyone should be treated with, instead of, you know, kind of turning someone into, like, some kind of, like, I mean, to me, that all this does, it's like it turns the average white guy into Don Draper, and, um... And I think to some extent, like, people, when they, you know, I mean, maybe when they do watch a show like Mad Men, it's sort of like, yeah, men kind of, they just sort of run the workplace. And they did in the 60s. I mean, you know how many female bosses I've had in the past 20 years? And they could treat me like garbage because they could. It didn't have to do with they were be, with they, that they were a man. They just had the position of power. And, you know, that's just how their personality was. And that's, it had nothing to do with them being a woman. I don't hate women because she was nasty to me or that or a couple of those bosses were really nasty to me. I just don't like them individually because of their character. Um, 
and I and that's where I come from. This is just, but pe I, I don't, I, I hate politics. Um, I particularly hate identity politics. It, it's it's one of the worst things. Um, it's not one of the worst. The worst things, fucking Donald Trump. But, um, but the thing is that um, the current alt right and the sort of whatever the left is, I don't even know what the fuck that is anymore. They they kind of feed the storm. They just that's all they do is feed a storm. You know what I mean? And it's 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 fucking wrong. And I don't agree with it. And it's it's becoming very it's 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 extremely toxic. And I'm really hopefully this will pass. Hopefully, you know people will come to their fucking senses and and um, we can you know start electing. I, I don't know if like that's ever going to happen. We can get rid of the Electoral College and all this other bullshit and get all this. But that's beside the point. Um, but that my, my take on the movie The 13th, I think it's a really good movie about, you know, race in America and, you know, and, and the history of it. And, and everybody should freaking watch it. Um, um, it's on Netflix. And, um, I was, I'd recommend watching it. Um, that's, those are my thoughts on it. My name's DS Yoxheimer. If you uh, like my channel, subscribe, um, take care and be good to one another.